This is Money Exchange with Andrew Barnett. Hello, I'm Andrew Barnett and welcome to Money Exchange, Australia's first and only dedicated currency program. Since our last program, it's been holiday week in China and the Aussie dollar along with commodities, stock markets and oil have all jumped higher. The Reserve Bank of Australia also decided to keep its interest rate on hold along with the Bank of England. Joining me from Melbourne to share his views on currency markets is a private professional trader who once ran the lottery in the Ukraine. Yep, true story. He's never worked in a bank and after returning home to Australia, dedicated himself to the currency markets and was named LTG Gold Rock Trader of the Year in 2014. We'll also cross to London to speak with Mark Simon of a global macro strategist on currency and interest rate markets at Aviva Investors. I'm keen to ask him his thoughts on the euro and pound and if the People's Bank of China is likely to meddle with its currency or interest rates again this year. Plus, I'll share with you my big currency movers and give you a chance to win $500 cash with our weekly currency quiz. Plus, we'll be answering your currency questions live on the show. You can email me directly right now via andrew at moneyexchangetv.com. But first, let's take a look at this week's headlines. Minutes from the US Federal Reserve's September meeting reveal a rate hike remains on the table, with conditions in the US economy expected to be ripe for a rise by the end of 2015. But concerns about China's economic slowdown and worries about low inflation saw officials hold off raising rates last month. The FOMC acknowledged recent global economic activity and financial market declines may have increased the downside risks to the US economy. They also decided it was prudent to wait for more data to confirm the economy is growing at a moderate pace and labour market conditions are improving. The Reserve Bank kept interest rates on hold for a record low of 2% at this week's October meeting. Governor Glenn Stevens says the current stance of policy will most effectively foster sustainable growth and inflation with consistency in the target. The RBA's decision was widely expected and its statement was only slightly modified from last month. Well, there was literally only one change that I could see, which was the, the statement around the macro prudential policies. Last month they just acknowledged that they had implemented policies and this month they're saying that the policies are working. But if you, uh, if you look at the minutes from last month, in those minutes they also referred to the fact that investor lending had slowed down. So really there was absolutely no change in their sentiment. And I guess if the markets have moved, uh, I guess they were expecting some possible change in sentiment, uh, which may have opened the door for a November move. The November probability is now around 25%, whereas this morning it was around 40%. The central bank has noted the softening in conditions in China and East Asia of late, but also flags stronger US growth. The RBA also indicated the Australian dollar is adjusting to the significant declines in key commodity prices. People often think investing in financial markets is like gambling and is a roller coaster ride filled full of emotion. One minute you're up and the next you're down. Who better to ask than Alex Koslin, who used to run the lottery in the Ukraine and has in the past few years made the transition to being a successful currency trader. Alex joins me from our Melbourne studio. Alex, what's our chances of winning the lottery compared to winning in the financial markets? I think you've got a much better chance getting ahead in the financial markets than uh, investing in the lottery. Absolutely. Alex, tell us, you've, you've a gentleman who's gone uh, from novice trader to now being at a professional level. Talk us about some of the attributes and traits that you've learned over the last few years that viewers of the program that are budding professional traders need to adhere to uh, to reach the levels that you're at now. I think for me uh, there are four key elements um, that I've learned and the first one would be you've got to have a routine and part of that routine is having a dedicated time where you can trade without being disturbed. You know? So you're not doing it when it's family dinner time or you know, you're rushing off to take the kids to school. So you need time where you can focus 
um, purely on, on your trading. Secondly, you've got to be disciplined. Part of the, your trading, you, you would have a, a specific trading plan which has specific rules and, and criteria that you need to meet and you've got to be disciplined uh, to ensure that you meet all, all the criteria in, in your trading plan. Don't become emotionally attached to your trades um, because that will lead to, to you taking shortcuts or, 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 or you know, moving away from your initial trading plan. And then patience. Patience is key. Again, if you go back to your trading plan, there would be specific rules and you've got to be patient enough to make sure that uh, the market movement is aligned with your, um, with your criteria and then you enter the trade. Don't so anticipate the market. So Alex, tell us a little bit about your decision making. Are you a short term trader, are you an intraday trader, are you a medium longer term? What are the sorts of things that you look at before you make a decision to buy or sell a currency? I would say uh, I would be more of a medium term trade. So my trades can be in the market anywhere from you know, a few days to, to a few weeks. Being a fundamental base trader, I would only trade in the direction of my fundamental directional view. Um, so what I what I look at doing is, you know, I, I plan a lot of my trades over the weekend when the um, the platform is closed, it prevents me from making any emotional decisions in case there is some short term movements. I look back over the past week over the various economic data that has been issued and the impact it, it's had on the, the particular currency pairs. That helps me determine what sort of momentum there is for any given um, currency. And then I look ahead to the week, uh, week ahead, have a look at the potential economic data that's coming out. And then I start to look at the, chat, uh, the charts to see whether the technical patterns that are potentially emerging are in line with my, my trading plan. And if there are some potential setups, they're the particular pairs that I, I highlight and that's what I focus throughout the week. And then perhaps around Wednesday, I will sit down and review the overall situation again. So I find by doing that, I'm not looking at every single chart every single day. So I've identified my priority trades and that's what I focus on. Okay, let's get to a couple of uh, emails from the viewers now, Alex. We've got an email from Rob who writes, I often see people trying to sell FX trading robots on the internet. Are they worth buying? I must admit, I haven't bought one. What about you, Alex? No, I haven't. I, I think if it was such a great thing, then everybody would be doing it. Um, I think a lot of it's... Yes, there is some mechanical element to trading, but I, I think you need to understand the movement of the market and take into consideration the, the fundamental and economic data. And obviously mechanical robots just don't do that. Okay, so our second question uh, this evening is from James and he asks, the Aussie dollar has risen strongly this week. Is this a short term move and where do you see it going in the coming weeks? What are your thoughts, Alex? I think it is a short term move. I think um, like the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar, the retracements um, is, is going to be short lived in terms of where it's going to move. If you look back to the recent lows of a few weeks ago down into the you know, 69 area, I think in, there's a real possibility that we can certainly reach those levels again uh, before the year is out. So I can't. In fact, uh I can't let you escape tonight, Alex. I know you're a red hot trader. I can't let you escape without asking you. Give us a couple of hot trading tips for the viewers tonight. What are you looking at at the moment? What positions are you in? Well, the one I'm really keen on in entering is actually shorting the, the, the Kiwi dollar against the pound. And obviously, there's a great chance that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is going to lower interest rates at least once this year, possibly twice. And if we look at uh, where the current levels of the Kiwi dollar to the pound, um, where it is now, it's about 2,000 pips below the previous, oh, below the previous highs uh, back in late August. So if we can get in with a, a tight stop and get a, perhaps an entry signal at a lower time frame, then uh, there's some great risk to reward trades in there. Well, there you go, everyone. That's a hot tip from a professional tr currency trader. <laughs> Alex, thanks so much for your time this evening. I really appreciate it. Pleasure, thank you. After the break, we'll cross to London to chat with a leading global macro strategist on interest rates and currencies and what he thinks the FX market is going to do next. Don't go away.